What's up, YouTube? My name's Quickie. Welcome back to the channel. He's getting on. He's getting on. Um, right. So, all cool is basically on. I'll do my lines and stuff in a minute. Um, but I want to try and get all this lot sorted, basically. <laughs> so the carbs is on. I just need to make sure they're not going to flood. And then I can stick all the cables on the throttle. We can stick some pod filters on, and that bit is basically done. All bar the tuning on the dyno. But again, this is like, you know, one of those things that has to get done and it has to get done soon. So, um, I'm probably going to have the carbs up. Basically, to, I wasn't going to pull them off, but I'm going to. The, the worry that I've got, and I don't really know if it is a worry or anything else, but when the bike was originally done and he put back through his MOT and stuck on the road, he had a few hundred miles on him. And then he basically came off the road and the carbs just sat there empty, you know, doing nothing basically. So the float needle um, in each of the carbs is like a rubber end to it that goes into a needle seat. And the idea is, is that you have a fuel supply on the other side. So as the fuel bowl fills up, the floats rise and this needle goes into its seat and it just shuts off the flow of fuel. Thing is, I don't know if those little rubber jobbies on the end, if they perish or they go hard or just, you know, leaving them empty and dry, causes any harm to them so they don't seat properly. If it doesn't, then basically you're going to empty your tank th into the carb. The carb's going to fill up, it'll overflow, it'll all go into the cylinder, wash its way past, you know, because there is a tiny little gap between the, the cylinder wall and the piston itself, and it'll all end up in the sump. So you just end up with a sump full of petrol. I don't want that because that's really bad. Because if you try and start it and it's full in there, you just hydro lock it and you can do all sorts of nasty there. So I just want to make sure that these carbs are sealing off properly before I hook everything else up to them um, and get it ready for a dyno. So they're coming off. We'll set it up on the bench, hook some fuel up to it and just see if they puke out fuel, basically. So what size are you? Oh, you're on a little diddy one, aren't you? Right. Right, if you was to look at me and say, where's the, where's the key to open the fuel filler? <laughs> I would look at your blank for a minute and then I'll, I would be running around the workshop for half hour trying to find the buggers because I can't find them. I had them in here, but it's not where I normally put my keys. I'll do, it's there somewhere. <laughs> no. I can't think what I've done with them. I don't know where they are. Um, so, you know, probably just as well we're going with an M unit, eh? <laughs> but it means I can't get in here. And I need that, really, for when we do, I suppose we could just run it with a puke tank, I suppose. Um, it's either that or I sort this out. So this is the fuel filler that's gonna be going onto the tank. It's just like one of those little Monza jobbies. I quite like these, actually. It is nice and it's going to sit on there a treat. Um, however, for it to sit on there, I need to remake another collar that's got that hole pattern to it. Um, and this bit is steel. So ordinarily this would get welded to the tank, but you would weld it from the inside, from the underside, and I'm not doing that because, I mean, the tank is fine as it is. Um, so I probably need to make an alley one of these uh, with some sort of o-ring and a lip so it can go into the, the, the filler neck on the tank and seal. So as you screw all this lot down, you know, it seals up properly. Um, or I could just find the bloody keys. Oh, what did I do with them? Um... 
Right, I'm not showing you how I did that bit, because that was horrible. <laughs> it involved a step drill, an attitude, and about 20 minutes. But we's in. Um, all that looks for well, paint's horrible, but we is in. Right. Well, that's junk. <laughs> All that is going to need to be drained out and flushed and cleaned and everything because there's bits of filings and all sorts in it. So bear with me. Right, this fuel tap looks a little bit on the ropey side as well. So we're going to have all this out, give it a clean up. I think I've got a service kit for it. I think it, had, I think it actually had one when I put the bike back on the road, you know, when it's first MOT and whatnot, after I got it. Um, but turning the fuel tap on, there's like a dribble coming out of it, which won't do. So we'll have all this lot off, we'll give it a clean up, see what the filter's like and all that sort of stuff. Um, it probably just needs a damn good clean actually. Um, the inside of the tank looks nice and clean, apart from all the little chips that I just threw in there. But all this is gonna get drained and flushed out and you know, basically cleaned up and everything else. I'm going to take some measurements off the top and I should be able to have a go at doing a collar for the new fuel tap, yeah, the, the fuel cap thing that I've got. Because I need to be able to get in and out of it. Come on. Right, so, we've got a chicken sketch. I've got an idea as to what I want to do. Um, I will take that with me as well. However, the time is getting on. It's now quarter to one. I need to chip off to me work. Um, but tonight I'm gonna to have a play about with CAD and see if I can't come up with something that will do the do. <laughs> I'll try at least. And we'll have a go at making it. So I'll be back. I'll back. It's now Tuesday and I've got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> going wrong. <laughs> right, it's not eight, there's seven and a half. Right, basically I went home and started cadding all this stuff up and I hadn't got half my measurements and stuff. <laughs> so I couldn't do it. So I've had to come back in and um, just knock up an idea. Right, so if you were to cut the tank straight through the middle, um, this is what you'd see. This is like the opening for the where the fuel filler bit goes. I just needed like depths and all that of the, of the middle bit which I've now got, um, and I can basically work everything out from it. Oh, hello, no, we're missing one, hang on. So, across there, from there to there, is 56. All right, so from that I can work out all the rest of it. Um, I've also got um, this gasket which will sit down on these two surfaces here. This has come off the bottom of the other fuel filler cap. Um, so we can use that to seal or I can just use a nitrile O-ring. It sort of depends how the design and stuff goes. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to have a ring um, to replace this one. They do come with like eight, only four of them are used. The others is just for show. So I might just do four, see what it looks like, because that will simplify things down a bit, which is kind of what I'm going for. Um, there'll be a hole in the middle that the um, the adapter for the Monza-style fuel cap will go into. So he's going to go up from underneath and get welded in from underneath. And then when it comes down, there'll be a shoulder, which this bit sits on, and that is going to sit on the, the, the top face of the... Uh, the fuel fill in the tank, which is exactly the same as the the way the you know the the stock one does, um, and then we'll just have a little protrusion to go down just to basically locate this this gasket, keep everything where it needs to be, and it's all good. Um, none of this is going to get removed as you undo the cap. None of it moves. It's the Monza filler cap on top that opens. So just by clamping this down, 
to the body of the, um, the tank is going to seal all this lot up. Um, I've still got my drain hole in here for any water that does come in, so that's all good. But I reckon we're in. I just need to cad it up and then start chomping stuff out on a lathe and poking holes in it with a milk. So we'll have that lot away. I'll take that home and finish up my cad. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I like to work my drawing now. Um, since I got into CAD and you can you know, get very specific with stuff um, and once you've like, modelled it all up you can get like a, you know, you can produce a drawing from it so you just machine stuff to the drawing um, and as long as you're coming on size it's all good, it's fine it's just a much 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 easier way of doing it so we'll have all them to one side don't need you anymore I ain't going to need you for a bit either Right, um, right, so what am I going to do? I need to, I need to mop this up, don't I? I want to make sure that those, those float needles all match up as they should do. Um, right, let's get the auxiliary tank. Right, it does look a little bit he's Robinson, I'll give you that, but I've got fuel up here, which is going down. So it's come down here, filling up the float bowls, and the worry that I've got is as the floats come up, the needle won't seat properly. Um, if it doesn't, then the carb's gonna fill up, it's gonna overflow, and because it's tilted forwards a little bit, as it would be on the bike, fuel is gonna start peeing out of here, and it's emptied the fuel. Right, I need some more fuel. <laughs> Awesome! This is going well, isn't it? Right, let me um, we'll tip some more fuel in there. Uh, hang on. Right, so all I'm looking for is for that fuel level in the thing to stop going down, which it pretty much has done, actually. I'm sure it has. And for nothing to be coming out here and dripping onto the, um, the blue rag. This is the easiest way to see, basically. Um, but he's looking all right, actually. So I'm gonna leave it just for five minutes, just to make sure. I don't know why, I mean, this is kind of like, you know, it's a good enough test, I suppose. Um, so I'll have a brew, and if all that is good, then we'll drain the carbs out, stick them back on the bike, and we can get some cables hooked up. Right, so he's all back on. Carbs is fine, didn't leak at all, so I've just bolted them back on again so they're all down on the boots and whatnot and I've also hooked up the clutch cable again. The clutch cable comes up between the outside two carbs on the left hand side like carbs one and two if that makes sense. Comes up through the middle and I've rooted it a little bit differently. I was coming inside this uh, frame tube but I've gone in the gap and it sits a lot nicer at the front and all the curves is like sort of bigger sweepy curves sort of thing so it's not as not as constrained. So I think that is probably how I'm going to run it. Um, I mean, it will certainly do for dyno. Um, it would be nicer if it came in just a little bit. I really do want to sort of stick it in the middle here, but it just seems happier there. But, you know, there you go. This fuel hose is solid, so he's going to get replaced. <laughs> just got all the HT leads and stuff out of the way, just so I can start having a go at these um, throttle cables, because I want to get all this hooked up. So which one's the pull? Um, that'll be that one. Right, well let's take the other one out for now, just so we don't get confused. And we can see how long we want this. And start cutting it up. <laughs> right, where's my fittings? Uh, um, 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 fixings. Right. Right, just so you know, you are totally in the way at the minute. <laughs> I'm having to work around you. The camera's in the middle. Um, right, so all we've got, we've got these little adjusters. So they go onto the carbs, and then this is the outer shroud for the, uh, for the pull cable. So um, it is basically gonna be going into this one. Um, and all I've got to do is sort of pull enough of this through so we haven't got loads bowing out the front. Mark up roughly where I want to chop it, probably about there. We'll go a little bit long, like just give it like an extra, you know, 15 mil, something like that. 
Um, I'll chop this off with a, a, a slitting disc on the, the angle grinder just because I don't want to crimp this inside. There's like a plastic sheath on the outside and there's like a metal spiral sort of sleeve spring type thing or whatever. And then you've got a coating in the middle just to you know allow the cable to move easy and stuff. But if you use um, wire cutters, you can crimp the metal bit in and then it sort of restricts the cable movement, which isn't very good. So we'll have all this roughly to length, mark it off, cut it off, um, see if it fits. If I need to take a little bit more, I will do until I'm happy with it. And then we'll just match up the other cable sleeve, um, just so they're running nicely together up the front of the bike. You're going to have to move though, because you are totally in the way. <laughs> Cables, carbs and pods is on. Although I do need to nip up my pod filters, I just stuck them on. <laughs> They're not nipped up or anything. Um, so now I'm just cocking about with HT leads. Um, trying to come up with ideas as how to route everything and how to keep it all tidy. I'm probably going to loop it back this way and have some sort of uh, cable tidy at the top. So we'll still be able to wire in all the primaries and everything else. But from the side view, all I want is HT leads to pop down and just go straight into the head like that. Um, I don't want big mess of nasty. Um, there is like a dip on the underside of the tank that goes into this hole um, and it comes past these side bits. So I can't use that. So I'm thinking of a cable tidy up here. It would look good. It does have like an extra protective sheath thing on the, the HT leads. So we ain't gonna have any troubles there and it just neatens it all up. It looks all right, I do need to shorten a few but it's an idea. So I'm gonna work out some sort of cable tidy, I think. It could just be zip ties, um, but we'll see. It just keeps everything off the engine and it just opens it all up when you look from the side. So I might be doing something like that. I need to try the tank on and just make sure everything's clear and you know nothing's rubbing. But I think I'm onto something. So anyway, I need to chip off to me work, but I'll be back. I'm back. Right, that's that, we'll get to that in a sec. Very freezing cold in here. Um, came out of work last night, uh, 11 o'clock, and everything was white. It had snowed, which it rarely does in Plymouth, and everything was frozen. But you say, well, okay, so I just put the heaters on. Well, I couldn't. <laughs> I haven't done this bit yet. I haven't stuck this in the van to sort my blowers out and stuff. For about half hour, I was trying to get all the windscreen cleared just so I could drive home, and I couldn't get it cleared. So I ended up, window open, head out the window, like a flaming Labrador with your ears going like this. <laughs> and that's how I drove home. Freezing cold, even with a woolly hat. And that blew off, I had to stop and go and get it. Um, this is all the Goodrich stuff, all my brake lines and fittings and all that sort of stuff. That's going back. Um, they do them in just like set lengths and stuff. Um, and the, the lines, you can't rebuild them. So it's not like a nut and an olive and all that sort of stuff. And I've gone through measuring up and, and just from the length of the lines that they do, and they do do them in increments, of, was it 50 mil or something? I can't remember. Um, I can't get it to lay the way that I want it to. So this is all going back and I'm gonna be using, I've been having a look online and at reviews and all that sort of stuff. I'm probably gonna go with Venn Hill. As it were, well, there's a couple of options. I'm still chewing them over. But he's going back and I'm going to be getting something else that can be rebuilt. It's still going to be stainless lines and, you know, all that malarkey. It just ain't going to have Goodrich on it. Um, but if you open any of this stuff, if any of it is out of the packet, just so you know, they won't accept a return. 
So it's not like you can offer the real thing up and go, yeah, that's going to work, we'll know it in, and this is what I need to change. Well, you know, you can't return it once you've done that. So, he's going back. But last night, I did muck about with CAD quite a lot, actually. And I've also got some other stuff. Let me show you. Right, so this is what I've come up with. Um, you remember those chicken sketches that I did? Well, I went home and stuck it all in um, Fusion 360, the package that I'm using, and just played about with it for an hour. I still need to make a couple of little changes, um, but this is basically what I'm thinking of making. So I need to make all the bits and pieces for this, but just to go through it, uh, if we just have a look one bit at a time. So this is just the ring. So this is the bit that sits around the fuel cap and it bolts down to the tank. Stupidly enough, on the original one, there's eight holes, which is why I put eight holes on this. However, there's only four of them that actually do anything. The other four are just decorative. They just screw through this ring and don't actually go anywhere. So four of these holes is gonna disappear. Um, if you, the, the opening here is just the 63.2, which is the size of the thread um, that is needed to put the Monda filler cap on top. And then underneath, we've got these standoffs. Um, the other change I'm gonna make is I'm gonna make this face here, um, where are we? So this face here, I'm gonna make that a little bit deeper, and I'm gonna put a groove in it around here. Um, reason being is that I can, if I can find an O-ring, then I can stick an O-ring in all the way around the outside. And that'll just help seal everything. Um, so, you know, rainwater and all that stuff is gonna have less of a chance of getting in underneath uh, the, the fuel filler. Um, there is a drain hole. This, this whole bit sits into a recess in the tank. And there is a drain hole, um, which is why I've, I've hogged out the back of all this lot here. Just so any water that does get in the drain hole's on the left-hand side, so as you put the bike on the side stand, any water that's in there will just work its way around and you know disappear out through this hole and out through the bottom of the tank. So that's all that. That's all good. Um, there is um, a little beveled bit down here. Um, where is it? That bit there. That's just well prep. Um, and all these holes here, they're just literally through holes, just clearance holes for an M5, basically. Um, so that's that bit. It'll be quite plain and simple on top, just four um, cap edge screws that will be sunk in. Um, I don't know, did I do that bit? I think I did. Yeah, so you can see it's like a pocket for the cap edge screw to go in, that bit there. Um, and all this will just be a nice snug tight fit around the thread. I'm probably going to have another O-ring um, around the base of the thread as well, because there isn't anything, you know, there is a there is a gasket inside the filler um, that comes down onto the top of the boss that goes through this. But I, just, I don't want to see threads. I want to try and hide it out of the way. <laughs> so that's that bit. And then up in the middle of it, uh, we've got this insert. So that's what it's going to look from, from the top. And this thread here is the thread that the Monza cap will screw down onto. So we'll probably have an O-ring kind of on that bottom edge there just to neaten it up a bit um, and this surface here is where the gasket inside um, the Monza cap sort of sits down and seals it all up. So that's all good and cushy. If we just get rid of the ring, um, so we're just looking at this. Um, so this whole bit here, um, that basically goes up through that ring that we've just been looking at. Um, again there is a, a bevel sort of here. Again, that's just the other side of the weld prep. Um, I'm not going to need to fully weld the whole thing around because um, there's going to be seals everywhere. Um, but it is going to be welded to the ring, I think. Then this face here kind of goes down through the ring. Uh, and this face here is where that gasket sits that I took off the old um, fuel cap. So there's like a two mil gasket in here, um, which is going to seal this bit um, down to the top of the tank. There's like, um, where, where you, where you uh, fill it up, there's like, there's like a rolled edge. And, and that's what this, you know, this gasket is gonna sit down onto. Um, that ring there is just a retaining ring to keep that gasket in the right place. And then this face here is gonna disappear down into the tank. Um, just cause I don't want you to be able to see 
like when you're filling it up, I don't want you to, to be able to see a separate bit to it, if that makes sense. Um, and if this protrusion goes down into the tank as well, then, you know, even if you're slap happy and stupid with a petrol pump, you're still not going to flood that recess with fuel. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, there is a gasket that sits here. So that's that rubber gasket that I was on about that I took off the, um, the, the fuel filler, you know, the old one. Um, so that's where he's going to sit. So altogether, you know, I mean, it, it don't look too bad. A couple of little changes. Um, get rid of four of these holes. See if I can find an O-ring the right size. And if I can, I think this is 106 mil diameter. Something like that. Wouldn't need to be a massive chunky one or anything, but I would just like to have another seal around the outside of this. Just, you know, because reasons. <laughs> I reckon that's going to do the do. I reckon that's not so bad. Um, and I've already made a start on it, actually. So I've come up with this. So this is going to be that red ring that you see on there. And he does just fit into that, that recess on top of the tank here. Um, doesn't go all the way down, because obviously I need to take some of the bottom out and whatnot. Uh, and it's got a 55 mil hole in it, which isn't big enough for that boss to go through. But it does mean that I could stick it on the chuck. Because that basically started life as a chunk of this. <laughs> So basically scribe the circle, cut it out with a bandsaw, it wasn't very round, um, but then stuck a hole in the middle so it could go onto the lathe. And then <clears throat> it was an interrupted cut. I don't like interrupted cuts, I've found out. Um, but you know, we've got it all round and nice and everything else. So it's a start off a 10. Um, I probably don't need this to run it on the dyno. I'm gonna have a chat with Crispy. Um, I'll ne I need to get him to come down and have a look at the bike actually. Um, but what I'm thinking is that um, I know he's got like a big auxiliary tank because we use that on the ZZR. So we could run it without a tank, which would simplify things quite a lot. So if I crack on and concentrate on making the battery tray thing shelf that he's going to stand on, um, then we can get the battery secure. So as long as he doesn't mind sitting on something on the subframe, as long as he's, you know, he can do what he needs to do, um, and as long as he's happy having his plum sitting on an M unit, <laughs> I've got like a leather um, uh, apron down there. So we can, you know, put that over top of the electrics. So he can sit on something and hopefully that'll be good enough. I'll, I'll need to get him to come down and have a look. He also needs to tell me what else he's going to need on the bike to be able to run it safely on a dyno. Um, I'm just going with common sense at the minute, but I don't know, there might be something that he specifically needs um but we'll get him to have a look see and you know i don't know he, he can he can make a decision um because that way at least i'm gonna have a list of stuff that i need to get ticked off to get it ready for dyno there's some obvious things so like the all lines i'll stick them on that's quick and happy um fill it full of oil we've got to wire it um what else is there what else? Oh, brake lines. Although if he's happy to run it without brake lines, I probably won't bother with them. <laughs> I'll just, because that lot has got to go back, then I've got to get the Venhill stuff. And I don't want to delay it. I don't know. We'll have a word. We'll see what he says. Um, see, so yeah, this is a stupid thing that, can you see this? Uh, there you go. Four of them don't do anything. How daft is that? It is just an aesthetic thing. And it's not even like they're blind holes either. They've got this stupid, it's just, it's not even a screw. It just looks like a screw from the top, which looks different to the ones that you actually put into it. And it's just got one of these little clippy jobbies on the back, it's junk. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> I haven't got a bit of uh, round bar to do that, um, where is it? That bit. The only thing I've got big enough is to do is 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 that. So um, I'm loath to use it as well because it's a nice big chunk that I pulled out the scrap and whatnot, and that could be handy for something else. So I'll have a squirrel about and see if I can find like a 70 mil slug of alley that is weldable um, and machinable and all that other ibble sort of stuff. <laughs> but if I can't, yo. Know, if I don't get a bit, then I'll just be using that, I suppose. But, you know, I don't really want to. <laughs> but anyway, so that's the plans. That's what we're doing. Um, 
I'm going to give Crispy a call and see when he's available. Um, I also got to have a chat with his chunky goodness. I spoke to Steve. Is it raining again? Oh, bloody hell. I've still got this to do. <laughs> That's going to be fun. Um, yeah, I was having a chat with Steve. -O. I've not heard from him in months. I th well, same months. I think I got a happy Christmas off him and a happy birthday, but that was all on the same call because it's back to back days. I haven't seen him in ages. And then he popped in for a brew on a Sunday, but he's on about coming down for dino day, which could be cool. Um, he's got his girls every other weekend. So it just depends like when we're ready as to whether he comes down for first start up or whether he comes down for dino. Um, if I can, I want to dine out in on Saturday, but you know, again, that's a conversation to have with Crispy. So there you go. That's sort of what you can expect. Um, I did get a nice finish on that though. I'm quite chuffed with that. Right, so that's where I'm gonna leave it. Thank you ever so much for watching. I do hope you're well and staying safe. We'll see you on the next one. Laters.